Hello my friends. This is going to be the first episode of the Lost Book of King Og, the only written words of the Rephaim. This book is very blasphemous. It's very evil and dark and twisted. Um, it's definitely not for the faint-hearted, um, not for children. Mentions of Baal and uh, worshiping the, you know, pagan gods and sacrificing to demons and uh, bloodletting and child sacrifice. It's pretty horrible. Once you get past the, uh, once you get past the first initial uh, issue that you have, where basically King Og is angry at Nimrod and he expresses his anger for Nimrod. Uh, King Og considers himself a Rephaim, and he calls Nimrod a Nephilim. He calls humans our smaller selves, like mini-me's, <laughs> our smaller selves. And uh, like I said, his god is Baal of the earth. Um, there is an unspoken mistake that they did, which we all know what that was. And they're very, I really don't know what it is, because in the book he does not say. But you can... Uh, you can assume that it's uh, uh, what you think it is because they're embarrassed by it. And apparently Nimrod and the priests of Baal and whoever had uh, apparently lied to them and told them and it was okay to do or something. Uh, you'll see. So it's an insane book. Uh, take it for what it is. It, uh, like I said, not for the faint of heart. And uh, it's uh, pretty crazy. So enjoy the book. Uh, this is the first, uh, I believe, two chapters of the Lost King, or the Lost Book of King Og. Enjoy it. The Lost Book of King Og, Chapter 1. These are the last and only words spoken by Og the Rephaim as told to Anzal the slayer of the smaller cells before Baal. Baal of the earth who keeps our gardens fertile. Baal of the earth who guided Og's complete loin wrath from when the old world monsters stood until after the time of the great waters. Baal who will reverse the unspoken mistake. The loose bowed false priest led mighty Og, Nimrod, and all the Rephaim to the unspoken mistake. That embarrassing which cannot be named or fixed until Baal intervenes. The stupid unspoken mistake stains us all to the inner loins. The mistake in the fields that the false, loose-bowed Rephaim, priest of Baal, led us to, perverting us all. I, Og and the true Rephaim priests of Baal, tore out the jelly of their eyes and pulled the skulls off those false Rephaim priests of complete loin. We spilled their stomachs and wet droppings out on the field. With bare hands, we twisted and tore them free. Nimrod also participated sacrificing his false Nephilim priest of incomplete loin and piling, and piling their plucked circumcised sexual organs atop each other and sparked the useless meat of fire. A disgrace to them, Baal of the earth was pleased. The blackened blood of both complete and incomplete loin deceivers ran thick over the grass. We cut the bodies into pieces and laid them upon the wood and poured four barrels of oil upon the flesh. Then the fire of Baal of the sun fell and consumed the sacrifice of false priests. The dark smoke of the cursed Rephaim flesh smolders, sacrificed, burned for Baal of the earth and the promise of fertility. We encouraged the vermin-like smaller selves of both kingdoms, both complete an incomplete loin present at the time of the sacrifice to feast upon the corrupted flesh of the Rephaim bodies. An unnatural curse now rests upon my spirit until the end of stars. We both encouraged, encouraged this new abomination, Nimrod and I, Og in our quest for the unnatural. During the time of the sacrifice of the priests, I, Og, governed my half of the great land and Nimrod his. I, Og, continually marveled over the tranquil peace between our war tribes. Nimrod's Nephilim kingdom enforced circumcision, while Og's did not. In that season, the kingdom of Og 
formed a pact of brotherhood with all the remaining Rephaim tribes and lands. This pact introduced the vermin-like smaller cells to Baal worship. In the pact, I called the mighty hunter Nimrod blood of my own lineage. Now, with the death of all the remaining Rephaim upon Nimrod's hands, I no longer honor the cowardly half loin Nephilim hunter called Nimrod. Only a half-loin Nephilim coward murders a child. For this offense and more, I regularly urinated upon his dead bones and corpse, until the meat and offal peeled away. Till the end of my days, I will take the daily journey to his Nephilim corpse. Of all the warlike hatred of which volcanoes are formed, I hold the most for the disrespected skeletal remains of the Nephilim hunter. Nimrod, who led his kingdom in the loin-weakening member-carving, practice of circumcision. I will tell the tales of how the Nephilim circumcised Nimrod offended all of the Rephaim, how in his stupidity Nimrod defied Baal, thus causing Baal of the earth to guide my unforgiving hands after war to his death. Will this and other stories not be told to a knock for the very chapters of this book? One day I, Og will finish my last meal and push my plate away and lay down to die. My hatred will cease, but the half loin name of Nimrod will forever mean stupid. Nimrod's name shall mean the Nephilim fecalness of mind and the mangled of loin. He alone carries all of the disgrace of the Rephaim. All who circumcise their members claim allegiance to Nimrod. Nimrod is the circumcised Nephilim who killed us all. Oh, that I could shatter the teeth of Nimrod's mouth again, and break the teeth of his half-loin Nephilim sons Jotun had the satisfaction of killing. Nimrod's sons, whose names will not be mentioned, to blot them from the earth. First, before I can tell the story, it should be told of how shrewd Nimrod the hunter was. What a good steward of his land he was. How much so I og envied Nimrod as a warrior. How much so I og envied Nimrod as a ruler. How much so I, Og, envied Nimrod as he forced the smaller selves build the throne root of Belial. I, Og, did not envy the circumcision or any of the lessening of the member that Nimrod chose for his Nephilim kingdom. Nimrod's land used the smaller selves for food in secret. He traded them to the kingdom of Og for labor in the open. Nimrod also forced the male Nephilim and the male smaller selves of his kingdom to carve their loins with knife of circumcision. Consumption of smaller selves in secret is the true mystery that Nimrod knew in. Nimrod, the dung smeared of mind and loin, raised the smaller selves as secret food meat. Nimrod and the Nephilim with an incomplete member who deceived and concealed his consumption of the, the adult male smaller selves. At the end of the great battles, with the unspeakable large-scaled beasts of old, Food in the kingdom of Og was scarce. The Rephaim brothers of animal husbandry, the great beasts and tamers Gog and Magog, had both turned their gray eyes to the magnificent Leviathan and other beasts of the sea for meat. Beasts of old, we fed upon the forgotten gods of a lesser time. During that season, I, Og, found a large colony of smaller selves in my kingdom. A colony of smaller selves riddled with Rephaim evils, such as murder and rape, as they enslaved and harmed one another. The powerful kingdom of Og was not deceptive or crafty with the smaller selves as Nimrod was. Smaller self adult males were struck down and eaten in the open. We chose not to hide our hunger from the smaller selves. I did not require the lorn carving circumcision that Nimrod required in his land. The Rephaim priests of Baal decreed that all lands were not to feast upon the smaller self females. Smaller self females became pure priestesses, wives and concubines of Baal, not to be known by any member. We taught the smaller selves not to kill or rape. Uh, we taught them procreative, text is missing. The value of the smaller self females. Nimrod and Og both taught the smaller selves Baal's truth during all the times of peace and war. 
the Rephaim priests of Baal decreed the sacrifice of the tiny, worthless, smaller self-children to undo the unspoken mistake. Nimrod's Nephilim kingdom and the Rephaim land of Og sacrificed all smaller self-children with effectual, fervent ritual, being of one mind and spirit bleeding for Baal to undo the unspoken mistake. The Rephaim must consider now themselves. The Rephaim must consider a return to the excreta, a beginning. Every day brings the extinction of the Rephaim species closer. Consider Baal when you have given birth to a child at 500 years. Consider Baal again as each new star passes. It is Baal, missing text, our land fertile. It is Baal, missing text again, again, produce Rephaim offspring. It is Baal that we cry out to and ask for extension. Um, the smaller cells will birth the next Rephaim. Baal is spoken through the priestess. In death of the moon child, uh, missing text, are bracelets for Baal. Smaller self-infants are scorched in the fire and scream to Baal nightly. There has been so much loss of life for him, Baal will extend to us and make us fertile again. Wow, may God watch over us and uh, keep us safe even reading this book, right? Baal of the earth has land with greenery and healthy vegetation, fruits and nuts. Baal of the earth also saw to Og success in the 100,000 giant war. Baal, with missing text, mountains to climb when the waters covered the earth. Baal guided my hands as I drew Nimrod's yellowing entrails from his Nephilim body. Scream to Baal of the earth, all Rephaim. Rejoice and scream and beg for the undoing of the unspoken mistake. Declare Baal's power. Missing text, again I scream and rejoice, be it war or contention. It is that Baal that keeps... It is that Baal that keeps our fields fertile, who keeps the peoples of the land. Remind Baal of the earth of fertility. In your missing text, remind Baal of the extension. Ascribe to Baal all of you Rephaim. Ascribe to Baal uh, the land fertility and your physical strength. Smaller self child offerings and come before Baal. Scream and bleed in the, this is all missing text, fertility awarded to us for our worship. The fertility that will prolong the Rephaim. Now, Baal, 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 however you say it, I really don't give a damn. Uh, so, I think I'm just kind of tired of saying that, that idiot's name. Over and over again, you have to forgive me. Tremble before the all powerful Baal, or Baal, before his established land of fertility that cannot be moved. Before his altar, we, and another missing text, and bleed on the missing. We await the extension as we scream, Come, Lord Baal, in unison with our wounds. More missing text through here, throughout here. Extension Baal of the earth will extend the Rephaim in his time. Not by our will, but Baal's will can the extension take place. We await more missing texts. Baal will not falter, even if he does not deliver. The smaller self uh, prophetess has prophesied the following that applies to the land. This is straight blasphemy, so thank you. I am Baal, your God, who delivered you from Nimrod in the 100,000 giant war. I am Baal of the earth who will provide the extension to the Rephaim. Because of this, you will bleed yourself before no other gods. I do not honor the circumcision. It is good for the Rephaim not to know the smaller selves. You will not cut your members for any of the other insect sides gods that demand it. May the destruction of my enemies buried in their punishment until the end of time. Worship me and I, Baal, will extend your missing text, of power and give you more missing text. Consider this. A time is coming when you all worship Baal Hammon. He is coming in storm. Every eye will see him, even those that practice circumcision. Let the enemies tremble and let the earth shake. 
the great bowel of the Rephaim stands above the insect-sized gods. Filth is the land of his heritage. Um, all will ascribe penance and worship. Blood sacrifice is, this is broken, fertility I will empower. Do not tire Baal's power as you see the lush country, as your crops, lost text, as cower the able and farshan the, the palsy served as temple stewards. Speaking through the smoke from the darkened sacrificial fire, the worship must fringy and gash with knives and lances. More broken text, Baal your delivers the promised extension of Rephaim lineage. Proclaim the power of Baal on the fertile mountain. Continue, I will extend you. Chapter 2 The Moon Child It is through gnashing of teeth that I give you full vent of my bitterness. My soul is downcast and disturbed. My history has become a fire, corrupting my whole life unto the extinction of the Rephaim. I tell this terrible history to Anak, the keeper of the bodies before Baal, for its transcription. My wrath tends to evil words. Anger, wrath, malice, and obscene talk all fall from my lips as I speak. I still hold the mot worshipping Nimrod responsible for the death of the moon child and the full portion of my hatred. Nimrod, that brutish, circumcised hater of reproof, the one who has planted and watered the gnarled living thicket that is my loathing. I tell no lie. I love not my brother whom I have seen, yet love Baal of the earth whom I have not seen. Although Nimrod, my brother, no longer walks the land, my swelling wrath still grows for him in the darkness. The tale of Nimrod and his quest to carve the members of the giants of his army and the rest of the land forevermore with circumcision. Does it not follow these very words transcript, transcripted by Anak? You know, he was very upset about that, was he not? Isn't that odd? Yeah. <laughs> the tale of Nimrod and his circumcision. And the time before the unspoken mistake when Og's land heralded Nimrod's accomplishments. Nimrod was called the great hunter and a killer of large giants and things. While on the field of battle, Nimrod did sustain a loin injury when he engaged the one-eyed Rephaim named Arg in warfare. The very same one-eyed Arg who fought alongside Og the hundred thousand giant war. When Nimrod wounded Arg's neck with the driver and chaser, Arg's unconscious body fell to the ground with his outstretched hand still grasping his sword. The sword's blade sliced upward at Nimrod's loins, cutting open his foreskin. The skin of Nimrod's wounded member hung as a testimony to all. He then escaped the field of battle. Arg's giant army soon heard of the wound and knew to search the loins of the dead Nephilim on the field of battle for the circumcision of Nimrod. Nimrod knew his own vulnerability. He then returned to his army and reclined in his tent. He took the flint of a mountaintop and finished his own circumcision and bound his loins in a sackcloth. Nimrod then had the braids of his head shorn. He shaved his beard and his eyebrows and anointed his head with oil. His cup was then filled with wine. He reclined and considered. After a short spell, he arose and sacrificed many smaller selves, and beseeched Mott for a delay in battle. Nimrod then took the mountain flint and circumcised one thousand Nephilim of his army. Those that refused were cut down by axe, chaser, and driver, and their Nephilim bodies were, were tied to trees for the beast as tradition states. Mott caused a bowel sickness to afflict Arg's army. Nimrod's army rested and healed for five days while Arg's army recovered. And Nimrod said, With the flint of a mountain top, heaps upon heaps, I have circumcised a thousand men, and is not the valley where Nimrod circumcised the Nephilim still called the valley of first foreskins today? <laughs> On the sixth day, Nimrod and his army then went to war with the no lower garments or loin coverings. The armies of Arg did not know which Nephilim was Nimrod in battle. One-eyed Arg's army gazed upon the compromised members of Nimrod's army and were befuddled and dumbfounded by them. Nimrod's giants then attacked with clubs, driver, and chaser, fists, boulders, and trees, and slew them all, but one-eyed Arg and his bodyguards who escaped to the forest and mountains. 
when Nimrod became ruler of this portion of the great land, he then demanded circumcision throughout all of his Nephilim kingdom. I, Og, circumcised no males in my land. The Rephaim kept their members intact. After Nimrod's mandated circumcision, the seven-year famine began, for Baal of the earth was displeased. The famine from Baal of the earth consumed the land. The very earth itself was dry and stiff with wounds at this time. Then came the false prophecy from the Nephilim and Rephaim priests of Baal in both lands. The false prophecy led to the unspoken mistake and to our extinction. I have hated everything Nimrod has loved, as I have hated his circumcised Nephilim kingdom. If I hated my circumcised brother giant and became a murderer of circumcised giants because of my hatred, so be it. I have a place in the afterlife. Baal and Mott have considered my oaths between them and see to it. Baal of the earth has damned Nimrod's name to eternally mean fecal-minded and simple. Nimrod's name shall be associated with the mad, desire to maim genitals forevermore. For Nimrod grew like a young plant, like a root out of the ground. He had form and majesty that we should all look at him, and beauty that we should desire him. He was championed by many. Still, I despise and reject him. He became a giant of sorrows, acquainted with grief. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Circumcised Nimrod, the celebrated forefather of the Tower of the Smaller Selves. It is the fecal-bellied, half-membered Nimrod who killed us all. My hatred for Nimrod has become greater than any, uh, any love I have known. I, Og, have exceedingly and cruelly hated Nimrod. I, Og, have since eradicated him from existence. I have since gathered and eaten all of Nimrod's food stores, and I, I have eaten many of his smaller selves. Bale of the earth empowered I, Og, to rid the land of Nimrod. Bale of the earth despised the circumcision. And to whom did the powerful arm of Bale of the earth reveal itself to? I, Og, are the tales of how I avenged the earth of that circumcised Nephilim for the loss of the moon child and more? Are they not told in this very chapter transcribed by Anak? Well, they were mad at each other, right? <laughs> He hated Nimrod, I can just say that. Og tells his brief history. I'm, I'm going to try to pronounce these people's names. Lest the queen of the Rephaim and I, Og, were bred from the spoils of a Rephaim procreation harvest, born of worship to Baal of the moon, born in the temple of reared and reared in the high places. I, Og, trained in both the priesthood of Baal and with the chaser and driver, war arts. Lesta became a sorceress before Baal of the moon, and a transcriber of words. Others born in the temple and trained in the high places at that time were Sihon Ag, my brother, Oya, Hahaya, Mawe, Meir, Lathat, the possessed, and Geron, the heavy. Before the Hundred Thousand Giant War, before the confused circumcision and before the unspoken mistake, there was a time of lush success. Baal of the earth caused the waters to flow and for crops to flourish in all the great land at that time. The great land was alive. The colors and sounds and connections of being in the land were bright and different. The feet of animals were sleek and fat. The herds of lizard, elephant, and rhinoceros prospered. Wine flowed, fruit, nuts, and honey were plentiful. Peace ruled all land. There was no smaller selves in that time. The seasoned bale of the earth multiplied the nation of the Rephaim. This was during the foreign war between Nimrod and Tarshan the giant's army. Tarshan the giant, who later fought on Og's behalf in the Hundred Thousand Giant War. The Birth of Agaius in our 300th year, the panic of childbirth seized my wife, Lesla, after she had become heavy with offspring. She then bore me, Ogaius, the inheritor. After, tra after travailing through great pain and labor, the birthing crippled Lesla, missing text, bedridden for ten years. I took to connecting with more missing text throughout this whole thing. His breath became my breath. He became a good prince in the eyes of the kingdom and all who surrounded him. I taught him the ways... Uh, Baal of the moon, the managing of my kingdom, the ways of the giant lizards, the ways of the elephants and rhinoceros. 
the ways of the floating wild beasts. I then taught Ogaius the ways of connection. Through battle and through acquaintance he was connected, from bale of the moon, sun, ground, or earth, and the host of the skies, to the animals, creeping things, and floating wild beasts, Ogaius was connected. With favor I favored him, and with love I loved him. I entered covenant with Agaius, because I loved him as my own soul. I then gave him the skin of Leviathan. I then gave him hammered armor. I trained him with the driver and chaser. Ogaius, the son of Og, proved himself great in war before both Baal and the Rephaim. Because of Ogaius, strong ways of connection, the Gantiqua soon chose him. Ogaius then became the herdsman of beast and lizard between the groves of sycamore figs. That's, uh, like those are dinosaurs. That Guntiqua, uh, those are the, like the dark ones. It's who inhabited the, uh, the beasts that, uh, were made by the Nephilim. Uh, I guess they didn't have souls or whatever, and the dark ones or whatever it was. Is, yeah, it's so weird, right? When the Hundred Thousand Giant War began, um, Ogaius the Inheritor was a leader over many powerful giants in war, those with the floating beasts, drivers and chasers, and more. Is not the tale of the Hundred Thousand Giant War as told to Anak the Keeper of the Bodies and Anzo the Slayer of the Smaller Selves before Baal, not transcribed in this very book? The Moon Child. My teeth grind and my throat rumbles as I tell Anak the root of my hatred for Nimrod with hope that the fruit will bear upward. Many years after the unspoken mistake, Baal of the Moon sorceress is prophesied that Lesla would be uh, with a Raphaim moon child. Lesla was past the years of childbearing and still afflicted by the wounds of Ogaius, the inheritor's birth. Lesla mocked and ridiculed the sorceresses to scorn for the prophecy. The priestesses warned Lesla not to mock Baal of the Moon. After I am worn and waxed old and my og is old, too, will we have delight, she teased. How am I, the last of the Rephaim females, bearing a child of the moon, she mocked. In Lesla's anger, she removed herself from the place of worship to her forest, resided there until the end of her days. The sacrifices continued. The sorceresses then prophesied, saying, Baal will bring Og's history forth. The moon child of Og will be Baal's legacy, and the unspoken mistake has killed its thousands, and the moon child will restore tens of thousands. The moon child was Baal of the moon's most fertile gift to prolong the Rephaim and Nephilim species. The most fertile gift required heavy sacrifice. For seven months under the moon, the drums were beaten, which shook the firmament of the land. We, we slaughtered and sacrificed innumerable smaller self-infants and males in the high places. The undrunk blood rolled through the block stone channels to the lower earth. The burnt offerings of the smaller self infants and males smoldered and darkened the skies. For seven months we seared the flesh of the smaller cells before the moon child in sacrifice. We ate the flesh and drank the blood in sight of Baal of the moon. We never doubted. When the seventh moon had passed, Lesla had grown heavy with moon child. She then went into labor, toiling with the moon child for many days. The sorceress flayed themselves mightily before Baal of the Moon. Many died. On the seventh day, the moon child, the last female Rephaim, was born. Lesla did not heal and soon turned stiff. I, Og, laid myself out before Baal of the Moon's altar for two days, pleading. On the third day, Lesla died. With Queen Lesla's death, Baal of the Moon's promise had both depleted and blessed the Rephaim. In mourning, Lesla, I celebrated the birth. Of the moon child. The second false prophecy. At this time Mott spoke through Nimrod's sorceresses telling him that the suitor for the moon child was in Nimrod's kingdom. This was another false prophecy that ended the species of giants. As I Og mourned the loss of Lesla, Nimrod and his military leaders traveled and visited the kingdom of Og to view the moon child. Nimrod the circumcised then spoke to the giants of Og's kingdom and spoke of the prophecy of Mott. Nimrod requested that the moon child be raised in Mott's temple in his Nephilim kingdom. When Nimrod spoke, the darkness of Baal's spirit and truth was in the air. 
Nimrod told us all the Moonchild purpose would be to breed in Mott's procreation harvest. I, Og, disagreed, and my military removed Nimrod, his circumcised military leaders from Og's kingdom. The Moonchild is Wounded Early in the Moonchild's life, at a time of celebration and feasting, spies made their way to the Moonchild's chambers to steal her for the purposes of Nimrod. This is all broken. Uh, when found the spies, great violence and destructive rage did not know that the moon child was among them. In combat, the moon child was wounded almost unto death. In the center hall, the remaining spies stood, and the army of Og stood aside, as I, Og, attacked with hip and thigh, bare hands, and killing them all with no weapons, slew thirty giants with my fist. As I tore and ripped into the giants, I learned of their circumcision, and I learned from their bloody corpses that they were the circumcised kingdom of Nimrod. The false prophecy of Mott and the treachery of Nimrod begat the seeds that soon grew to become the hundred thousand giant war. For this and more I hated Nimrod with all the hatred I have in my intact loins. He circumcised offenses against the moon child and against the kingdom of Og, demanded a whole-membered response. The tales of how I, Og, got my terrible hands upon Nimrod the circumcised, how I broke him into glistening wet entrails and pieces, how I, Og, allowed my son Ogaius to participate in the killing of Nimrod the circumcised. Has that tale not been told to Anzal the slayer of smaller selves before Baal? Chapter 2b, The Prophecy of King Og Introduction by Anak, the Keeper of Bodies It is known that as the moon child lay close to death in the temple of Baal at the moon, King Og then clothed himself with a long white robe and with a golden sash across his chest. He refused food and drink and chained his arms by the rings within the temple of Baal of the moon. In his right hand he held, it's missing text, Og hung upon chains while standing for seven days, until the death of the moon child. Only the smaller self sorceresses and I, Anak, keeper of bodies, attended to him. In his trance, Og's seven braids fell about his head, and his eyes darkened and turned inward. The temple of Baal of the moon was closed as Og hung upon chains before Baal and pleaded for the life of the moon child. So when the elders of the rough aim went to the temple of Baal of the moon to rid Og of his chains, they were refused. He would not be freed, nor would he eat food with them. On the third day of Og's hanging silence in the temple of Baal of the moon, he raised his head and spoke the prophecy. On the third day, Og's hair turned as white as wool. His eyes became clear as a flame of fire. His body glowed dimly as burnished bronze. His face became as the sun shining full force. His voice became as the sounds of the great waters to come. I, Anak, the keeper of the bodies, did both observe and transcribe the prophetic words of King Og at this time. This is Og's prophecy that pitted the Rephaim against the Nephilim in the Hundred Thousand Giant War as described by I, Anak. The Prophecy of King Og, Baal of the Earth A little more blasphemy till we get to the Hundred Thousand Giant War, but uh, here we go. Do not be afraid, for I am Baal of the earth, the first and the last. I am the living one. I am alive forever and ever. I, Baal of the earth, know your works, your toils, and your patient endurance with the abomination, with missing text. I know that you cannot tolerate the circumcision. I know that you have tested the Rephaim that claim to be whole-membered and found some to be false. Is it your credit that you hate Nimrod, whom I also hate? I, Baal of the earth, know of your affliction and of the moon child. Uh, I know that the slander of the circumc circumcised is spoken against you. Do not fear for the war that you are about to suffer. Be faithful to Baal of the earth, and abhor circumcision until your death, and I will give you rewards. Let he who has ears listen to what Baal of the earth has to say through his servant Og. Baal of the Moon And I saw the moon child clothed with the sun, and the moon at her feet. On her head was the crown of the Rephaim. 
She was pregnant and crying out in birth pains and agony of giving birth. Then the great circumcised dragon, with seven heads and ten horns, appeared before the moon child. The dragon stood before the moon child, ready to devour the new Rephaim as soon as it was born. And the moon child gave birth to a son, a male child who was to rule all the giant nations with a rod of iron. But the moon child's son was snatched from her and eaten by the dragon, and the moon child went to the wilderness to die, a victim of the circumcised. For the sins against the moon child are heaped high to heaven, and Baal of the moon will not forgive the iniquity of her death. Render unto the moon child as herself has rendered. Repay her land double for your circumcised deeds of destruction. The uncircumcised will mix a cup for the moon child, a double draught to pour out in remembrance of her. For in the moon child's heart she was a queen, and she will never see grief. Therefore the plagues of Baal and Mot will come to Nimrod in a single day, pestilence, mourning, and famine for the circumcised. For the moon child was killed by Nimrod, and the hour of his judgment has come. Do not be afraid, for I am Baal of the moon. I will avenge the moon child and will deliver Nimrod <clears throat> into your hands. I know where you are living, where Nimrod's throne is, yet you hold fast to your irre irreversible circumcision. You stupid giants hold to the teachings of Nimrod, who through circumcision has placed a stumbling block before all of you. You circumcised will throw dust upon your heads. You circumcised will weep and mourn as you are tied to trees for the beast and carrion to consume. For you have laid waste to the moon child. Baal of the moon rises in judgment for her, a star from the sky upon you, O circumcised Nephilim. With such violence, Nimrod's great cities will be thrown down. The sounds of harpists and minstrels and flutists and trumpets will be heard in Nimrod's land no more. Artisans of any trade will be found in Nimrod's land no more. The light of lamps will be found in Nimrod's land no longer. For Nimrod and his entire nation were deceived by the great sorcery, and all of his prophets will be slaughtered by servants of Baal of the moon for the loss of the moon child. Baal of the sun. It's kind of odd that... uh. That uh, Nimrod and Og and everybody are just obsessed with this circumcision thing, and that's so weird. And then the same quotes we have in our Christian Bibles, he, they quote here. So that's why I said it's probably a lot of blasphemy. Uh, Baal of the Sun. Behold the words of Baal of the Sun. I hold this against the Rephaim, that you tolerate the giant Nimrod who calls himself a great hunter and is teaching and beguiling the Rephaim to practice circumcision, and not to sacrifice the smaller selves. I gave him time to repent, but Nimrod refuses to repent of his circumcision. Beware that I am throwing Nimrod on a bed, and those that practice circumcision with him, I am sending my servant Og to bring them great distress. Jeez. Og will strike down Nimrod circumcised with death. All of the land will know that Baal of the sun does not respect the circumcised. <laughs> to Og I will give authority over the nations and people to rule them with an iron rod as when the clay pots are shattered I, Baal of the sun, will give Og the morning star look before you I have set an open door which no one is able to shut I've heard that before a door of victory over the circumcised I will keep you to hold fast to what you have so that no circumcised may seize the crown of Og I will make Og a pillar in the temple of Baal of the sun. Let's see. And I, Baal of the sun, call for the hundred thousand giant war, where the circumcised will finally be eradicated. I, Baal of the sun, that sits in the throne that looks like Jasper and Carnelian. All around my throne is the emerald floor, and my twenty-four servants all wearing golden crowns and white robes. Coming from all of their thrones will be flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. And under this there will be a multitude of Rephaim, from all the tribes and peoples and languages, standing before Baal of the sun with palm tree fawns and their hands screaming in a loud voice. Victory belongs to the uncircumcised who are seated in the kingdom of Og. Let there be <clears throat> blessings and glory and wisdom 
and honor and power and might to Baal of the sun forever and ever. These are the Rephaim that fight the great war against circumcision. They have not spilled their blood of their members for Nimrod for this reason. The Rephaim and before the thrones of Baal of the sun and his twenty-four servants who worship him day and night in his temple, the Rephaim will hunger no more and thirst no more, and the sun will not strike them or any of, its, of them with its scorching heat, for Baal of the sun has spoken. Baal of the Stars and Celestial Bodies Behold, it is I, Baal of the Stars and Celestial Bodies, with my four guardians standing in the corners of the great land, the guardians that hold back the wind so that no wind will blow against any temple of Baal or against the uncircumcised. Yet I, Baal of the stars and celestial bodies, call to my guardians who are empowered to damage the great land and the seas until the circumcised have been ridded from the great land. Sounds to me like it's a lot of lot coming from a knock. You know, he was, uh, <laughs> sounds like a lot of this is like straight from him until it tells about the wars. But uh, yeah, this sounds like uh, straight up just a priest, satanic priest. <laughs> uh, it says, prepare circumcised followers of Nimrod to have your stomachs to turn sour. Prepare for your spit to dry in your mouth. Prepare for your skin to be tight from lack of water. Prepare to be unable to bathe. Prepare for your terrible beast to die of thirst. For I, Baal of the stars and celestial bodies, have left your circumcised land. Let there be silence in the heavens for more than an hour, for Baal of the stars and celestial bodies has a message for the Rephaim. After the silence, Baal of the stars and celestial bodies will throw his censer filled with fire to the earth, and there will be peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and earthquakes. There will be hail and fire mixed with blood as the circumcised are dashed to the earth. A third of Nimrod's kingdom will be burned, and a third of his trees burned, and all of the green grass in his land. <clears throat> I've heard that before too, right? Baal of the stars and celestial bodies will drop a great star from heaven, blazing like a torch upon Nimrod, his circumcised Nephilim, and his rivers. The name of the star is Uncircumcised Worm. <laughs> Holy shit. The name of the star is Uncircumcised Worm. And Nimrod's waters have become bitter, as with the blood of a corpse, and many of his circumcised Nephilim will die from it. On that day, Baal of the stars and celestial bodies will strike a third of the sun and a third of the moon and a third of all stars, that a third of Nimrod's light is darkened. Woe to the inhabitants of Nimrod, Nimrod's circumcised land. They shall be plunged into darkness, where the Nephilim will gnaw at their, at their own tongues in agony and they will be covered with pain and sores. Nimrod's great city will be split into three parts by an earthquake. The wrath of Baal of the stars and celestial bodies will be poured out upon Nimrod and his kingdom, and the wine cup of the fury of his wrath will be splashed about. And all of Nimrod's land will sink, and no mountains will be found, and huge hailstones weighing as large as hillsides will be dropped from the celestial bodies upon the circumcised until they curse Baal of the stars and celestial bodies because of their corrupted members. I, Baal of the stars and celestial bodies, will then drop a star upon the great land that will fall through the earth into the bottomless pit, and the shaft of the pit will be opened, and smoke will rise like that of a great furnace from the center of the earth, for Baal of the stars and celestial bodies will release Mott from the underworld. <laughs> All righty then, right? <laughs> Mott. Behold the words of Mott, and behold the locusts that I will bring upon the land of Nimrod. Behold the uncontrollable scorpions that I will release upon the circumcised, the scorpions that damage the remaining grass and trees in Nimrod's land the scorpions that will destroy all except those who have not carved their members in the rites of circumcision. Those that are circumcised shall be tortured and killed. Their torture will be the stings of scorpions. The circumcised will seek death and not find it until Og delivers it to them. Hmm. Heard that before, huh? I will make <clears throat> Nimrod's land a dwelling place of demons, a haunt of every foul spirit, 
a haunt of every foul bird, a haunt of every foul and hateful beast. This is to come along with more. Behold the plagues that I, Mott, will bring upon the circumcised from the underworld. Locusts as large as horses with Rephaim faces, hair like women's hair and teeth like lion's teeth with armored scales, wings and stingers on their tail for the uncircumcised Rephaim to command. For I, Mott, stand over the bottomless pit of the underworld. I will empower the uncircumcised to kill one-third of the circumcised inhabitants of Nimrod's land. I will empower them to kill the circumcised while riding beasts that breathe smoke as the Rephaim warriors wear breastplates the color of fire, sapphire, and sulfur. The rest of the giants of the great land who remain uh, undecided concerning the act of carving their members will face me as I arise from the underworld. I know your works. You are neither circumcised. You are either circumcised or you're not. You are lukewarm in regards to the governing of your members. I will spit upon you while wrapped in smoke with a dark color of oily water above my head. My face will be as the sun and my legs as pillars of fire. I will raise my right hand to the sky and swear by the underworld that there will be no more delay in the death of the circumcised. The circumcised will say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing. Yet you fools will not rec realize that you are circumcised, wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. Therefore I counsel you that you never cut your foreskin, that you may be rich, and robes of purple clothe you. Imagine that. Behold, my servant Og stands at your uncircumcised door and knocks. If you heed his voice and open the door and remain uncircumcised, the kingdom of the Rephaim will enter into your home and eat with you. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what Mott has to say to the circumcised and uncircumcised alike. So spoke the prophet Og while chained to the bracelets of the temple of the Baal of Earth. I warn every giant that hears the words of this prophecy from King Og. If anyone adds to them, O oh geez, Baal of the Earth will add to that giant the plagues described in this prophecy. If anyone takes away from the words that are in King Og's prophecy, Baal of the Earth will take shall take away that giant's share in the whole of the great land that will belong to Og. Uh, to Og. Thus said Anak, keeper of the bodies before Baal. He wishes, right? The death of the moon child. And it came to pass that on the seventh day Og spent chained in the temple that the moon child died. The servants, the sorceresses, and Elder Rephaim were afraid to arouse Og from his miserable chains to tell him that the moon child was dead. For they said, Indeed, while the moon child was still alive, we spoke to him, and he would not heed our voice. How can we tell him that the moon child is dead? He may do us all some harm. When Og saw that the servants and sorceresses and Elder Rephaim were whispering, Og perceived that the moon child was dead. Therefore Og said to the gathering crowd from his chains, is the moon child dead? And they all said, She is dead. So Og arose and unbuckled from his chains. He was washed and rebraided his hair, anointed his beard, changed his clothes, and went to the temple of Baal of the moon and worshipped. Then he went to his own place, and when he requested his smaller self-servants, set meat before him, and he ate. Then his smaller self-servants said to him, What is this that you have done? You have fasted and wept for the moon child when she was alive. But when the moon child dies, you arose and ate food. So Og said, While the moon child was still alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, Who can tell whether Baal of the moon will be gracious to the Rephaim that the moon child may live? But now that the moon child is dead, why should I fast? Can I bring her back again? When I die, I shall go to the moon child, but she will not return to me. It was on this day that Og sent messengers to giants throughout the great land and beyond to join him in war against Nimrod because of the death of the moon child and because of their adherence to circumcision, which is disrespectful to the gods. In this way, the hundred thousand giant war began. <laughs>